This training video is for part 13, Evaluate Communication Links. Create a new scenario with the default time period. Click Create a Scenario. Name the scenario STK Comms. Keep the default start time and keep the default stop time and click OK. I personally do not need the timeline view. If you want to keep yours open, you can, but I'm going to close my timeline view. Next, save your scenario. By clicking on the save icon in the uh, STK toolbar area and in the save as window, click save. Model a ground site that will model a ground control station. I'm going to use a place object as my scenario object, insert default as my method, and click insert. I like to give all my objects meaningful names, so I'm going to the object browser, right click on your place object, select rename, and call the place object ground station. The default place object in STK is located at the AGI headquarters in Exton, Pennsylvania. Next, we'll model a moving satellite that has visibility to the ground site. Return to the Insert STK Objects tool, select Satellite as your scenario object, use Orbit Wizard as your method, and click Insert. Keep the orbit type circular. Give the satellite a name such as ComSat. I'm going to change the RAN to ensure I have at least one pass over Exton, Pennsylvania, which is where AGI is located. So in the RAN, I'm going to change that value to minus 50 degrees. Anytime you're using the default units in SDK, the easiest, fastest way to do this is highlight everything in that field and just type in the value. So in this case, I'm going to type in minus 50 and then hit the tab key and STK will put in the default unit for you. Then click OK. I want to ensure that my ground site can see the satellite. So I'm going to create an access report to determine how well my ground station sees the ComSat during the 24-hour period of my scenario. In the object browser, right-click on your ground station and select Access. This opens up the Access tool. At the top where it says Access 4, you can see Ground Station because I right-clicked on the ground station and opened it in the object browser. I'm looking from the ground station to the satellite. In the Associated Objects list, select ComSat, and then in the Reports field, click Access. For my 24-hour period, I have a total of eight accesses where my ground station can see the satellite and vice versa. Close the report and close the Access tool. Now, model a simple transmitter on the satellite that has a 2 GHz frequency and a 10 dBW EIRP. Return to the Insert SDK Objects tool. Select Transmitter as your object. Define Properties as your method and click Insert. In the Select Object window, highlight ComSat and click OK. We're going to keep our transmitter type as a, as a simple transmitter model. This gives me an isotropic antenna. Go down to model specs, change the frequency to 2 gigahertz, and change the EIRP to 10 dBW. 
then click OK. Next, we're going to model a 5 degree simple conic sensor on the ground site that is targeted towards the, the satellite. The reason we're doing this in SDK is you can use the sensor object to act as a motor, as some sort of servo motor that can dongle an attached antenna to follow a targeted object, in this case a satellite. So return to the Insert SDK Objects tool, select Sensor as your object, define properties as the method, and click Insert. In the Select Object window, highlight Ground Station, and then click OK. Leave the sensor type as a simple conic, change the cone half angle to 5 degrees. We're simply going to use the sensor view, the field of view, as situational awareness of where the sensor is actually pointing towards, which again will be the satellite. Browse to the basic pointing page. Change the pointing type to targeted. And in the available targets list, select ComSat. Click the right arrow and move ComSat over as your assigned target. And then click OK. In the object browser, rename the sensor motor. Next, we will model a complex receiver with a parabolic antenna on the sensor and display the volume graphics of the antenna. Return to the Insert SDK Objects tool, select Receiver as your object, define properties as your method, and click Insert. In the Select Object window, select Motor, and click OK. Our receiver is a child of the sensor. Therefore, the sensor is pointing at the satellite. Therefore, the receiver's antenna will also point at the satellite. We're going to change our receiver model by clicking on the ellipsis button and selecting complex receiver model and clicking OK. The frequency of the downlink was 2 gigahertz. By leaving auto track enabled, this receiver, when I do a link budget from the receiver to the transmitter, the receiver will, will automatically tune to the transmitter's frequency. Click on the antenna tab. In model specs, we, we will change the type to parabolic by going over to the right and clicking on the ellipsis button. Change the antenna to parabolic and click OK. Go up to the diameter field and change the di diameter of the parabolic antenna to 0.5 meter. So we will have a 1 half meter dish. Click Apply. Next, we will display the volume graphics for the antenna on the 3D graphic window. Browse to the 3D graphic attributes page. In the volume graphics field, enable show volume. Change the gain scale per dB to 0.1 kilometer. Enable set azimuth and elevation resolution together and change the azimuth resolution to one degree. The more points there are in your resolution, the smoother your graphics will look on your 3D graphic window. Click OK and save. Let's do an access 
from the transmitter to the receiver. So right click on the transmitter in the object browser and select access. In the associated objects list, expand ground station and then expand motor. Select your receiver. Go over to the reports field and click access. I'm going to use this so I can quickly view my volume graphics that we created during our last step. So in my first access, on the start time, right click on that start time, select start time, and then select set animation time. And if you look in the animation toolbar, your animation time is exactly the same as the start time for this particular access. Bring your 3D graphic window to the front. Go up to the object browser, right click on ground station, and select zoom to. If you're using terrain server and you have Bing maps, give it time to render. And I want to see my volume graphics. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit, well, step forward a little bit to get my volume graphics out of the dirt. So to do that, I'm going up to the animation toolbar and I'm going to step forward multiple times till I get my axis up a little bit so I can see the volume graphics of my receiver antenna. This is a good way to view your antenna pattern. Next, we're going to create a link budget between the transmitter and the receiver. So return to the access tool by clicking on the access tab at the bottom of your screen. Access 4 should still show the transmitter. In the associated objects list, you should still have the receiver selected. And go over to the reports field and click link budget. Scroll all the way over to the right in the report, and we're going to view the BER column, which stands for bit error rates. In this case, what I'm looking for, in my case, I'm just going to say I need a bit error rate of 1 to the negative 10 or lower. And as you can see, our bit error rates are very poor. Most likely, this has to do with the transmitter power. So let's fix that. Return to the object browser, right click on your transmitter and select properties. Let's change the EIRP to 20 dBW. Click OK. And when you return to your report, go up to the toolbar in the report Put your cursor on Refresh and click Refresh. And if you look at your BER, they've improved somewhat. They're still not great, but at least it gives you an idea of what your problem was. You didn't have enough power. We can run this report with a finer time step. So for instance, I can go up here to the step value and change that to 30 seconds. And then make sure you have your cursor in that field and click enter. And that will refresh your report and show you your link budget every 30 seconds. I'm going down to the report tab, right click and select close and do that for your other report, your other access report that you created a moment ago. Close that also. Return to the access tool. What we're going to do now is create a custom graph for your transmitter to the receiver access that displays the carrier to noise ratio. 
Underneath the Reports field in the Access tool, click the Report and Graph Manager button. What we're going to do is we're going to create a custom graph. So in the My Styles field, select that, and then go up to the toolbar area and click Create New Graph Style. Let's name this new graph style CN for Carrier to Noise, and then click the Enter key. This will take you to the properties of this new graph. On the left are your providers. There's a lot of providers in SDK, so sometimes it's easier to filter out the and look for the provider you, you want to use in your report or your graph. So up here on the filter line, I'm going to highlight the asterisk and get rid of that. And then I'm going to type in C over N, C slant bar N, and then click the filter button. Now I only have three providers to look through. I'm going to start with link information, expand link information, and scroll down till you find C over N. Select C over N, come up to the Y axis field and click the right arrow and move C over N into your Y axis. Go down to OK, click OK. And now if you look in the My Styles field, you can see your new graph. Select CN and then click Generate. When you're doing graphs in SDK, sometimes you might want to sample your data more to make a nicer looking graph or to see more information in the graph. In this case, what we will do is go up to the graph step and change that to 1 and then hit Enter. And it just gives you slightly more information. A lot of other times in SDK when you're doing graphs, 60 second graphs will give you jagged lines where if you change the step size to one, you'll see rounder, nicer looking lines. It just depends on how much data you want to see in your graph. Close the graph. Close the report and graph manager. Close the access tool and save your scenario.